Hey guys, Tyrep here bringing you a 1v1 today. We are on Lagraskaya. Playing today's pointing in the north. We have op opt I6. Call them I6 from here on out. Uh, <laughs> playing Zossia and straight away going for German infantry. Let's help in the south. We have Sidewinder 1911. Playing as Brits who has mobile assault. Vanguard. And Royal Artillery. We've got a very early sniper start here for I6. Two kills already before we can get behind the sight blocker there. Ouch. In terms of ranks, uh, around rank 110 versus around uh, in the mid 40s. But you have to remember this is like a Brit rank. You know, they're very unpopular at the moment. Believe it or not, I'm rank 20 as Brits. Doing my absolute garbage tier strats. I think that shows you the state of the player base for Brits at the moment. And how easy they are to play, honestly. Okay, so Grandy is sneaking into the building. Could be painful for Sidewinder. Who uh, decides to go for the Universal Carrier. Cancelled the 4th Infantry section. Sniper wrapping back around to help deal with this section on the far side. Another green deer coming in for I6. And there we go, sniper going to work. Here comes the universal carrier. Tommy's charging down the centre. Getting a little bit of damage onto the sniper here, that's exactly what you want. Early damage onto the sniper counts for a lot. Oh my god! Might have needed only one more shot to get the kill there. Very, very close call for that sniper. You know, as you might have seen though, with my videos, better off running and gunning. To get uh, more time to shoot your gun. Leads to more damage overall. Better chance of wiping rather than standing stationary. If he can chase, which he could, you know. I was about to get suppressed or anything like that. So that buys I6 a bit of time coming back onto the battlefield with the sniper. This is quite risky with the universal carry right there. Could just charge forwards here and go for the kill. The sector has been cut off. Instead choosing to bleed the greens a bit more. You have the option as Brits, you know, because you cap up the map so quickly, especially in this patch, to uh, just go for a super fast tick and to snipe yourself. That's an interesting idea coming across this side with the sniper. Oh, very, very low. Grandy could go down here. No chase from the Royal Engineers, though. That's a bit of a blunder. House connects, and the Grandy gets away, so it's a worst of every scenario for Sidewinder. Didn't get the wipe. Sniper does manage to retreat safely away from the engineers, trying to chase it down. But uh, I6 is up against it, you know, getting some good bleed with that sniper, but it's just suffering a decent chunk from the universal carrier and just, you know, infantry sections never dropping models. Backing us up with an AEC. Is so, that's a good choice, boys. To expect you are going to be up against 2 to 2 to try counter the Universal Carrier. In this case, though, we can see that I6 has not put down tier 2 yet, so quite slow in that department. Another dicey retreat here. Engineers coming across. No. Okay, he's coming across now. Universal Carrier. <laughs> oh my god. Incredible luck. I6 has been blessed by the RNG gods this game and right up against it here. Pushed almost completely off the map. Let's bunk it down now. 
The thing with, you know, with this commander, you know, if you've got the veteran squad leader upgrade, you can kind of get away with not building a med bunker for quite a while. Because, you know, once the greens get vet one, the med kits become free. Let's have one vet up green here. So, uh, worth considering. You know, boost your on field presence, which your green is definitely need against the infantry sections. Save some manpower for a bit. We are losing a okay, Bolster now for Sidewinder, so following a very well worn path with this build order. Not looking for the counter snipe. This could be a white pair though. You see chasing in. Tommy's focusing it down. Doesn't even have enough munitions for the Faust yet. But again, another somewhat lucky escape. Sniper coming out to do some damage. But I6 having to play very, very defensively here. Going for the pack now, which is a good choice. You know, if you can't get the 222 out at a fast timing. Going for a uh, pack is a reasonable choice. Still though, I generally do like to go for the 2-2-2 against uh, Brits, even in these kind of scenarios. Just try and like bait the AEC in with the 2-2-2. Play some uh, mind games. Maybe help bait it over a telemine, something like that. Ooh, commando ambush. Infiltration uh, deployment there. Nearly gets the sniper, not quite though. And there go the commandos. Oh, I didn't even notice that. It looks like Pack got a shot on the UC. Very, very low. Coming back to repair that up now. Sidewinder conceding quite a lot of territory here at the moment. back out, picking away at the infantry section, 7 kills, now 8 inside the building very very low, ok, jumps out in the nick of time, AEC hiding behind the tr uh, shrubs here Not to around the corner, take some damage Bit slow backing away here as well could take a second shot if the attack ground came through, but it did not Sniper continuing to stack up the body count. Enemy threatening a capture point. Commando is also a you know, decent soft counter to the sniper. You know, you also can use camouflage, sneak around and camouflage and try and spring an ambush on the sniper. We're losing a, capture point. a little bit trickier to execute though, generally, than a counter snipe. And now a 2-2-2 two -two -two from I-6 in 10 minute 2-2-2. Two -two -two. I feel like the ship has maybe sailed on that a little bit, but I think his fuel is just so low, his territory control has been so horrendous. He's ages away from a medium tank, so maybe it does make a little bit more sense in this particular instance. Hmm. So is still a decent amount away from a medium tank as well, in spite of this very strong territory control. There you go. Your squad lead upgrade pops on the green ears. They're pushing on to the other side of the map. Something we haven't really seen too much so far. But yeah, if he wants to fight against these bolstered infantry sections, your squad leader green ears are really, really going to help. Otherwise, the yeah, four man green ears just stand no chance. Sidewinder investing in tech. Still about 50 fuel away from a tank. Now I6 going for a machine gun at this stage. Commandos trying to work their way into the retreat path of these grenadiers. They're pretty healthy though, four models. Might be tough to get the white. Take 
quick look at the KD and things have uh, evened out a lot. Is he missing its first shot? Is he gonna go for the kill or is he gonna get cold feet? Main gun crit. Okay, he's going in for the kill on the 222 here. There it goes. Could go for the grenadiers now as well. It's on prioritized vehicles though. Backs away. So I6, yeah, it was a little bit clumsy with the 222 utilization in the pack support play. End up losing that for free. If we're really careful with that, like, you know, how where your Phelps and squads are, what angle your pack's at. Oh. Dodges the commando's grenade there. Sidewinder doesn't go in for the chase down either. Interesting. Gonna go for the fuel capture. Maybe wants to prioritize getting out a medium tank at this stage. Pack working its way back around. Universal carrier a little bit low here. We'll go down to one shot. Needs to be quite careful with it. But yeah, generally when we see players go for like a no counter snipe style as Brits. Uh, oh. oh man, I wonder if he's stuck in there, like can't vault. Sometimes that can happen. Going for the wire snips, but... Oh. He gets it. He gets the snip off. You're very, very vulnerable when trying to cut wire like that, but does manage to survive. But yeah, if you're trying to not go for the counter snipe style... People generally play uh, commandos and use the assault ability. Oh, obviously, it gives you access to commandos or oh, telemine. Which are a reasonable option in the assault. You know, you just like sprint forwards with the recon planes. Oh, there we go. Telemine. You just carry. I didn't even notice that one back there. It goes down and abandoned. Sniper stacking up the body count. 20 kills already. We are losing a sector. And here comes the Cromwell. Does have the sweeper on the engineers, but they haven't come out this side, so it worked out pretty well. And this is a pretty like common location for a telemine. Like here, along here, very, very popular, so... For the wise, you know, bring a sweeper over here if you try to push in this region with your vehicle. Definitely worth the caution. Well, oh, Cromwell in the works, and let's see if Sidewinder can leverage that to overwhelm. I6 going for a second pack at this stage, which I think is a very good decision. It's to expect the medium tank. Oh, Commando's doing another ambush on the sniper, but. Not getting much of a reward for it there. And here we go, double packs open up. Commandos working their way around. Sniper comes out for the snipe on them though. MG in some trouble here. Packs up now. A little bit late throwing the gun bomb. You can see that he actually cancelled it. So he realised he's probably going to be too late. All packs setting up again. Good incendiary shot sh shutting down that commando squad as well. A bit of bleed here from the Cromwell as it back kills away from the packs. And their hits though, and now that's a lot of repairs for the Cromwell. In this commander, you do have vehicle crew repairs, which is unlocked at the moment. And this is a scenario which I would definitely recommend using it in. Our supply line's broken. Got some brains coming through for Sidewinder now. Oftentimes though we see players, you know, when they're up against the sniper style, not go for brains. Because <laughs> then you can run and gun with infantry sections, which they are very strong at now after 
the uh, tweaks to their cover bonus and players going for a more grenade heavy style those grenades with the short fuses on the current patch which is getting changed but very very strong currently but yeah Brands will help them fight a lot better against the veteran squad leader Green is long range so maybe we'll try and deal with the sniper through other means by six Battle Phase 2 in the works has just about enough fuel for a tank after this as well. But by going for the Panzer Grenadiers, he's going to be hamstringing himself in terms of manpower. So I think this is probably the wrong decision at this stage. I'll be trying to push our tank as quickly as possible here. Finishes off the Rick. Cat coming down here. It does have Vet 1. Could maybe utilize the Tiger weak point. Missing its first shot. Here comes the second pack. Cromwell coming in from the other side here. Takes a main gun crit on that, however. So this is a good approach from Sidewinder coming in from multiple angles. Got to be very cautious that he doesn't take a Faust here, though. It would be terrible if he does. Oh, looks like he uh, got close enough. Guess it's not throwing them out though. Oh, there we go. Good ambush. Good reactions from I6 though. Very impressed that he reacted to that in time. Oh, that was one that I would struggle to react to with my input delay. This could be a decent time to just charge on top of the anti tank guns here. But he's kind of uh, mismanaging the pathing. I say that because, you know, the Green Deers were a little bit further away. Wouldn't take a snare for a while. Could probably get the decor on that one relatively quickly and then focus on the other. Good to see the uh, med kits getting utilized by I6, though. Commando's going to go for another ambush here. Tanks continue to inch forwards. And now this one at Vet 2, that's when he gets the reload bonus. And that's when they become super nasty against medium tanks. So yeah, once once that Vet 2 mark gets hit, that's when you have to be extra cautious against double anti tank guns with your tank. You might not be able to get out of the danger zone in the nick of time. Ready to go on reconnaissance. Popping the vehicle crew appears. I'll probably pop it on both of them here, honestly. Like, there's not that much to you to use your munitions on in this commander. The advanced cover combat is, is mediocre. Okay, well, he takes a bit of a break here. Goes for hammer, so I guess it's going to be a comet next. So a decent chunk of fuel away from that. Did go for an anti-tank gun though, so maybe that would suggest that he's going to go for a stall here. I think personally in this scenario I would try and just spam out as many Cromwells as I could. Try to go for like a triple Cromwell style, but... This is also a, uh, a more conservative approach. The Comet, you know, very, very strong. Oh, is he going to get lucky again? Yeah. Mine slightly off to the side. And uh, very, very low on health. It manages to escape. Despite continuing to pick shots. This is what I was talking about, you know, even if these squads do get in range, because the LMGs can't fire on the move here, can't even do that much against the sniper. EPs have uh, leveled out quite a bit. Sidewinder's still ahead, but only by about 50 now. Cromwell still needs some more repairs. AC back up. This is the first shot. A little bit late backing away though. 
so the pack moving in as well. But yeah, we haven't seen Sidewinder, you know, spam a whole bunch of sandbags. Which is uh, very common as Brits. I think he's only... Is that the only one he's built? Oh, there's one over here as well. Yeah, generally, you know, towards this ranking, these sandbags left, right and center. And here comes a panther from I-6. He's just ticked all the way up after stabilizing here with the double packs and gone for the panther. So, you know, Sidewinder trying to save up for the comets playing this style, which is bleeding a tremendous amount of manpower to the sniper and having a bit of trouble. I mean, I suppose he's got pretty unlucky not getting a wipe in a lot of these scenarios, but... Yeah. Well, the game has uh, slowly slipped away from him, and uh, now he's actually going to be probably a little bit behind once this panther arrives. Oh, good hit there from the Cromwell. The Cromwell has been getting some decent shots with the main gun, has to be said. And I-6, okay. I was just about to say, we haven't seen too much attack ground play from him. He's gone for some here. Shot from the Cromwell though, poking its head around the corner. The here comes a panther though, this could be trouble. Do have one mine down here. Did get detected like maybe twice by the uh, Pyos. I don't know if he noticed it though. While Commando is trying to sneak in on the sniper again. If Cromwell takes a Faust in this scenario, he almost certainly dead to the panther tank gun. Should probably be pushed up around this area to defend the Cromwell's retreat. Okay, Panther just going to charge through and <laughs> this the fire. Bust through the, the hedge row at the exact point. <laughs> Has to be said, like, you know, going for these kind of uh, gammon bomb wipes a little bit tricky against Grenadiers with the received damage bonus you know with their veterancy a bit more successful against folks even though they have five men though I suppose we have five men greens in this particular instance as well so something to consider thing with this commando is he's kind of stranded there's no cover for quite some distance and you kind of have to bait the sniper over to this side with some infantry sections on the far left if he really wants this to work out frag bombs coming through green spots dodge forwards trying to get the wipe here Another lucky break for I-6, getting away with those greenies, those things. <laughs> There's nine lives today. Our brave infantry oh no, the commandos! The commandos finished the job. There we go. Good work from Sidewinder. And now ambushing these packs. Now the sniper, the sniper, the sniper! Oh no. The sniper's going to get away. He's focusing on the next pack. This one gets recruit. And he gets cold feet at a very strange timing. Still three models quite healthy. Nothing in his retreat path. Decides to pull back with the commandos. Could have got the decrew on this pack for sure. Quite safely. And uh, his own anti-tank gun getting decrewed by the squad inside the building. The Panther still with the damaged engine. So not super helpful over here. Here comes the Comet though. Double packs pushing forwards. There we go. Greens could be in some trouble on their retreat. Comet pushing in. Recruise the anti-tank gun. Comet coming around. Comet pushing in. Will the Panther's armor hold up? I think, yeah, he needs two shots to connect. Here comes the AEC, but stopping for a minute. Pax having trouble this close to the action. Here come the infantry sections from the other sides. Going for the D crew. Down goes the Panther. 
Can the Comet escape now? AEC could pop smoke to try cover its retreat. It's got just enough munitions for it. Both the anti-tank guns go down over here. So this could be a time maybe for the AEC to come back in, which is at more than one shot from death and try to kill the decrew weapons. Oh, he's got his anti-tank gun up there though. Maybe that can finish the job. A lot of repairs required and Sidewind is quite low on munitions at the moment. Going for the kill on the anti-tank gun. One of them is going to make it away though. Crew repairs on one. Going for a second engineer for repairs. Fair now. decision. A lot of reinforcements required for Sidewinder. Take a quick look at the KD again. Sidewinder still marginally ahead. The new engineer section is waiting for orders. But yeah, nice nice patience with those commandos, getting that wipe on the green deer on retreat. Finally comes good. Come on, back up to full strength after the vehicle crew repairs coming across to deal, deal with the green deer. Sidewinder now behind on the VPs. And we do have a pack in this position for I-6, so good predictive pack positioning. Just going to take a pack shot and a Faust. So Cromwell are going to need some repairs again. Looks like I-6 saving up for the Panther. Enough resources for that now again. Sidewinder though, having lost his fuel for quite some time here. Still quite a long way away from his next tank. Just me, or is that mine like revealed? It looks revealed. Oh, okay. <laughs> Buys have retreated and they're so far away, didn't notice. Okay, oh, doesn't spring the ambush correctly there. A little bit late reacting. Incendiary shot. Don't come in across though. Good shot on the Pegrins early on. Heck, rotating across here. Oh, this could be the death of the sniper. Comet focusing it here. Gets cold feet though. No, he's going to continue the chase. Missing the killing blow. Popping out a crew grenade. And the uh, pack's going to go down. His anti tank gun though needs to be pushing forwards in support here. Going to try and hang around for the kill on the D crew pack. Here comes the Cromwell and the six pounder in support. And here comes the Panther. Okay, he manages to kill it. Doesn't miss his shots with the Comet. Comes to Cromwell now to save the day for the Comet. Cromwell threatening the flank. Comet coming back in. Not a bit of a uh, push pull. Did pop the war speed. Got some good distance in. Needs to be uh, very aware of the six pounder positioning. In a slightly tricky position. With his tanks here. Six pounder, it's a linchpin. Activated assault and hold, but I don't think he really shot at too much infantry during that timing. I didn't really notice it at least. Damned enemies trying to take a point from us. Mine getting triggered. Do have a telemine over there, by the way. Another one down there. Good dodge on the right from me. But yeah, brained up squad. Oh, AC coming in. Because they're bringing up squads out of cover. Gonna get chopped up here. And they're just about back up to full. A lot more repairs required on the British side of things, though. Takes a Faust on the AEC. That could be in some trouble. Crew repairs on the Comet. Definitely worth uh, doing some repairs on the Comet, activating the war speed. Looks like that's already active though, so not required in this instance. I'm just trying to sneak in here. There we go. There's a retreat from the green slow I6. Pretty good on his reactions to those kind of ambushes. And now going for a uh, smoke. Try to cap the VP. 
Sidewinder down very low on the VPs here. Does have quite a lot of resources. Could try and squeeze out another tank before trying to do this. Another Cromwell, something like that. It's just enough pop cap for something. Like a Cromwell. But I mean, every time he comes forwards, he's just taking so much damage on his tanks. There's just so much downtime, even with the vehicle crew repairs. It's really hampering his ability here. Tank gun hasn't been super successful, but there we go. I think that's the first time it's actually uh, done damage to a tank. Commander's in some trouble. Sniper over here. Looks like he's going to go for a front. Oh, get more there. Got the commandos. He's just going for a frontal assault. Sidewinder may be on tilt here. And there we go. A little bit lucky on the pins. Comet goes down. Some Piets coming forwards. Cromwell getting desperate coming in. No support from the anti-tank gun though. This could be the end of the Cromwell. Back missing and the Panther playing very conservatively. Has stopped the drain at least. But yeah, losing the combat like that is so painful. I think Sidewinder, yeah, maybe just got a little bit impatient, you know, 62 VPs, it's still quite a lot of VPs. It's still got a lot of resources. I think I would have tried to sit back, go for another tank, make a big push. You know, he would have had, maybe like this one stay neutral, this one capped, so the clock would have stopped. I think he had time, but instead he tried to like rush it. You know, after taking some damage on a couple of his tanks, he tried to continue to engage and just did not work out for him at all here. Oh boy. This is not going to go well. Had the blitzing across to finish the job. And there goes Cromwell. Looks like Sidewinder was just like fully committing, trying to save for a second Comet. Instead of just, you know, making the best of his current situation. Going for the Cromwell because, yeah, I mean, with his old composition where he still had the Commandos, couldn't even fit another Comet into his comp. Didn't have the room as pop cap, so. Hmm. Well, here comes the Comet. Still has enough room for one more unit as well. Maybe some infiltration commandos. Could actually be a reasonable choice here. When, but can he hold on until the Comet arrives? Triple cap ticking against him here. See on the far side. Okay, here he goes. Coming in. Most of this has been crushed, so quite open in terms of sight. Comet about to pop out. Here we go, Sidewinder. Can you do it, buddy? Not charging through the center here. Tommy's not their ideal range. Sentry shot there. Disabling the infantry section, and there they go, having no luck. Here comes the Comet, got the pack in position though. Here, yeah, so slightly out of range. But, Panther back up to full, 12 VPs remaining, needs to jump on a VP point right now. And all those squads are back at base. Unable to hold on over here as well, and Sidewinder throws in the towel. So, impressive comeback here from I6 on the back of that sniper. It got extremely lucky, it has to be said. Like in the early game, there were two Grenadiers that like 90% of the time I would say would have died. And same story with the sniper, very, very lucky. But a few slight blunders from Sidewinder, you know, not chasing as far as he should. You know, a couple slight errors such as that. Which uh, did allow I6 back into the game. And yeah, Sidewinder, I feel like you know, it's admirable to try and go for like a no, no counter snipe style, but 
it can be very, very tricky to execute. Also, I felt like trying to save for the comet at that stage gave I6 so much breathing room. You know, you want to try just like continuing to press your advantage, which we uh, didn't really see from him there. Gave I6 way too much time to tick up instead of keeping the pressure on. Would it be nice to see some more smoke? I suppose he's pretty low on munitions, but from his uh, tanks as well. Could have been really nice. And yeah, never really saw like a big all in GG push driving right on top of the packs and decrewing them and killing them. I suppose he did decrew them at one stage, right? But only managed to kill one of them. Anyway, GG, well played by I6. Uh, impressive comeback after a terrible start. Well, I'll wrap on that, guys. If you like, you're going to be cast by me. Details are in the video description below. Otherwise, I'll catch you off for the next thrilling installment. Goodbye and good luck.